Welcome to the testing world. In this session, I will show you how we can do API testing using robot framework. So as we know, robot framework support different type of applications. So we can automate web based application, we can automate API. Previously, we already covered what is robot framework, how we can set up robot framework and different basics of the robot framework. This session is mainly how we can automate API using robot framework. So we will cover practical steps how we can do that. Okay. So these are the prerequisite you must have before going to this lecture. So if you can see, we already have the Python, we already have PyCharm, we already installed these two libraries. We have already done these prerequisites. Okay. Now we are going to follow these four steps. First of all, we will create a Python project. Then we will create a robot test case file. We will divide our sections and we'll start writing test case. Okay, let's move to PyCharm. Here on the PyCharm, I, I have already have a project, but I'm creating a new project and we will start everything from the basics. So I'm just coming here. I'm giving the name like API automation robot. Uh, you can give any name over here. I'm just opening it to a new window. Okay. When we create any Python project, it will create main.py. We are not required this file, so I will just remove it. Now we have a Python project. We need to create a robot test case file. So either you can create this file directly here in this project or what I do, I will create a directory first, giving the name of this directory is test cases inside this directory I am going to create a file that is my test case file so I am giving like tc001 get request dot robot robot is the extension so now we have a project and inside the project we have a file and that is our test case file as we have covered test case file will be divided into different sections so I'm just writing these sections. I use control space for suggestion. First it is setting. Then I'm going for variable. And then I have test case. So these are the three sections we are going to use. First, in setting section, we are going to define library. In our case, library is request library. Always remember it's request means including s now here we are going to write test case so i'm writing like tc001 get request fetch status code so that will be my test case so here we have seen we created python project we created robot test case file we have divided different sections and now we are ready to write test case now in the first test case we are going to make a get request then we will capture the response we will fetch status code from the response and then we are going to validate status code so first we need to make a get request for this video i'm going to use my api first of all i'll show you that api which we are going to test simply move to the browser and my application is url is the testing word api.com here you will get on the API and we have a lot of API for testing but as of now I'll start with the student details and here I have a API which is a get API by which we can fetch detail of any student so I'll just go inside that just click on that okay now we know that is our base URL and that is the relative URL of the API so first we need to fetch base URL. I'll just copy and moving to the PyCharm. So here first we are creating a variable like API base endpoint. So that's my base URL of the API. We are also required to get this relative URL, but we will use it later. So then I'll copy it. Now, 
whenever you want to make a request we will have to start or I would say we will have to create a session whenever you are testing API using robot framework the first keyword would always be create session so I'm using create session either you can write it in the capital or a small it's not going to make any difference so that is my first keyword now what is the session name you want to give so I'm saying my session name is API testing okay then what is your base URL so that is our base URL I'll just copy this variable so here is our base URL I will just copy this variable and just paste it over here so one step is ready which is start session means we will it will start a session for the API testing okay let's try to execute this and check are we getting something for that I will just right click on this folder and open in terminal and here I'm writing robot and my file name is TC001 get request enter so as of now this step is working everything is passed okay now the step one is done as a step two we need to make a get request so I'm saying okay get request and this API which we are going to use right now is not having any authentication means we are not uh, we are not required to pass username password it's a very simple API which can be hit directly later on I will cover up how we can test complex API like like how we can pass headers how we can pass parameters authentication at and many other things but as of now it's a very basic API so I'm making a get request again you can use a small or capital it will work the keyword will work okay now what is your session name so if you remember when we created a session the name was this so first we need to pass the session name then what is the relative URL so if you check it in our case that is our relative URL okay here we need to pass ID as of now I'm directly passing the ID like this because in my system I have a lot of a student and I want to fetch detail of particular student so means I want to fetch detail of, of the student having this ID okay let's try to execute this again and check it so I'll just go to the terminal robot and the file name so file name is tc001 get request dot robot enter okay it says one message over here this get request is deprecated even you can use it it's not failing but it is deprecated means they have given a new method for making a get request so either you can use this or you can use a new keyword which is get on session so I'm saying I'll replace this like with the new keyword which is get on session so you will get it new keyword here again let's try to execute our is it working yes means two keywords are working okay here we are making a get request we have given the complete URL we should get some response from here so I want to save this response I want to capture the response in a variable so what I do I'll just create a variable like get response is equal to and whatever the response we are getting on this get request we are just storing here in this variable now as a next step I just want to print it so log to console and this is the data which I want to print I'm running it even it's not going to give me response it is it is not going to print response let's check it when I execute it is executing but it shows response 200 it is not giving the content of the response or it is not giving the state only status code so how we can fetch it okay now I'll show you how we can fetch content of the response and how we can fetch status code so that is my response variable here I write status underscore code means from this response I want to fetch status code in the same way I do like this log.console and from this response just print content 
Control S. I'm just saving it and executing again. This time you will notice it is showing me that is the status code and that is the response JSON means that's the response content. So as of now, we are making a get request, whatever the response we got, we just capture and print status code and content. Now, so we need to make a get request. We done it. Capture response. We already done it. Fetch status code from the response. We checked it. Now we need to validate status code. Okay. What we do? I just want to validate the status code. So first what I do, whatever the status code we are getting. So what I do? whatever the status code I'm getting that is fetching the status code I'm writing here should be equal and that is my actual status code which is coming in the response and I want to check it should be exactly 200 okay let's see that's a simple get request so I'm expecting it should be 200 when we are going to run it should pass but we will notice it's going to be fail why let me show you so I'm just running it and enter I'm just running it if you notice test case executed successfully even we are fetching status code which is 200 we are expecting it should be 200 but still when we are comparing it it is failing why because when we fetch status code from the response it always a integer value but when we are giving any data here in the robot framework is always a string so we are trying to compare integer value with the string and because of that it's failing so what we should do whatever the status code we are getting I'll take it to the string and then I'll compare here because here it's very important to understand whatever the value we are writing here in the robot framework it's a string we need not write like double quotes but it it, it is by default string so but whatever the data we are fetching the status code we are fetching from the response it's an integer so we need to take the status code to the string and then we'll compare so how we can do it I would say my status code and that's the variable I'm creating here I am writing convert to string. I am calling a keyword which is convert to string. So whatever the response code we are going to get here, just convert to string and store here. Now I will use this string status code, status code in the string format and compare here. So if you notice now I'm just doing the formatting so it will convert my status code into the string format and then we will compare let's execute it one more time you will notice it's getting pass so here we have seen the first test case in which we are just making a get request whatever the response we are getting we are fetching status code and validating that that's the first API testing test case using robot framework. Now, next session onwards, I'll create many other test cases of the get request. Like we will compare the data in the response. We will send header. We will send parameters. So a lot of test cases we are going to write for get request. Then we will move to put, delete, update type of request. Here, I'm going to give you one task. Just make a request to any API which you have or you can use my API. Whatever the response code you are getting, whatever the status code you are getting, you just need to validate that. You write two test cases. One is positive and one is negative. Like in negative test case, pass any incorrect data. And now expect it should not be 200. So here we are using should be equal. You should use should not be equal. So that would be my second test case. So write this test case, copy it and send it to me. You can pass it to the comment or you can direct message me. So that will help you to practice and understand all these concepts. That's all we have. Thanks for watching this video.